the spectacle. I'm moving up on a level equal to that of a professional. I see you grin, you're looking skeptical. But when I start to spit, you'll see I'm unforgettable. Get in line for the sideshow. Turn of vision, got you jaded, making everyone a rival. Survival of the fittest, that's what I know. Keep your word bond like your hand up on the Bible. This attitude's a testament to where I'm from. I'm more fresh than a straight edge pair of lungs. I'm up lovely, seeing no one else above me. On top of the world, like the protege of Puffy. I'm comfy, never really was so classy. I'm diving in bars in Tallahassee. Step out and go see the world outside. Put a cloud up to the sky, that's how we ride. Boy. So should be recording now. Okay, so going back, welcome on to the podcast. I'd like to have artists introduce themselves. So give us your name, your pronouns, describe your music, that sort of thing. <laughs> All right, so my name is Artisan P, a uh, rapper from Florida, originally from Miami and Tallahassee now. My pronouns are he, him, and the music I do is hip hop, underground hip hop, but you know, kind of like primarily boom bap with a lot of lo-fi influence. And that's basically just like, very like New York sounding 90s golden era nostalgic music beats that are hard hitting, you know, very strong drums, you know, boom bap kind of like it's kind of like onomatopoeia where it's describing like literally what like the music sounds like. So um, if you think of people like DJ Premier, Ninth Wonder, they're hip hop producers that are definitely like pretty prominent in like the boom bap sound. So yeah, very underground 90s New York nostalgic soulful samples and ill rhymes <laughs> there yeah so you're not originally from tallahassee right you're from miami so how did you get to tallahassee uh so originally i came up here for school and i was kind of back and forth between here and miami after i graduated i moved back to miami for about four years or so and then i moved back to tally so I've been back now for about seven years since moving back. Yeah, I think my stay here is like a lot more permanent. So definitely call Tallahassee my home now. What was your major? Creative writing. Oh. Yeah, so after college, I taught high school for a little bit, which was interesting. So I did that for, that's what I was doing in Miami, actually. Got a job teaching high school, working at the school system down there for a bit. Realized it wasn't for me and my girlfriend and wife now, we decided to move up here and we've been here since yeah, 2016. That's very, yeah, definitely a tough job. Both my parents are teachers, so <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah, my, uh, my wife's mom's a teacher. Um, a lot of my cousins are teachers. One of my aunts was a principal. She just retired. So yeah, I grew up with a lot of educators and have so much respect for that, you know, that job because yeah, it's a lot. So yeah, but... <laughs> very um unsung i guess but yeah so you said you moved up here like guys kind of permanently about seven years ago which i guess was about the same time your first ep came out as i think that was from 2016 yeah 2016 so my yeah so that so that came out in february and then i came up in the summer so right before i left miami the space cadet ep came out yeah it's actually funny because in 2015 was the first artist and piece show that i played but I actually came up and played that show in Tallahassee. So even before moving up here, I was already kind of back and forth. Yeah. And then once I moved up here, I started releasing like the rest of what I have. And it's, 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 it's interesting because being here, I found like myself being a lot more creative and having outlets to be creative, which is interesting because Miami is such a big city. You would think that, you know, there are opportunities, but th because it's so big, like I feel like Tallahassee had such a more like thriving creative community and like since back when I moved up here for college in like 2007. So I've been here for a minute, just going to shows and like things happening. And it was very, it was kind of like a musical playground for me because you could just jump from show to show. There's so many artists that live here that sound different. So yeah, I felt myself thriving up here for sure. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot that this, it being a smaller scene is lit to be, seems to be like a bit more collaborative in nature is what I've heard different yeah. like artists say. I know like, it's, I think it's really cool because I know you've, you played, I mean, you've had, I've definitely seen where you've been, done bills of just hip hop artists, but there's a lot where it's like the, the rock or punk bands and you or the other hip hop bands playing or groups, artists together, which I think is really cool being seen shows of that nature like that. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, totally. And I feel like it's always kind of been like that here because I grew up playing in punk bands. And so I came up going to a lot of like DIY house shows. But then, yeah, there were always other rappers on some of the shows too. Like Gainesville has a pretty decent hip hop scene. So like artists from Gainesville would come up, several local artists as well. So yeah, it was very interesting to kind of just like meet people from across the state and everyone's just like, yeah, like... Yeah, Florida is like a really big small town where everyone kind of like knows everyone and like, and I feel like having those collaborative shows like plays a really big part of that, you know, so um, yeah, it's, it's awesome because yeah, I just listen to so many different types of genres and everything. So it's nice to just like hear a live blend of just like different sounding things, you know, so. Gotcha. So how's, how different is the scenes or how do they compare like Miami versus Tallahassee or any other places that you've spent time in? I mean, they're not like too different. So Miami, definitely like the last couple of times I've been, there's definitely a scene down there. Don't get me wrong. It's just such a wide, the city is so widespread. There's just like a bunch of different scenes, just like physically everywhere. But I mean, there is still like a DIY ethic down there. You know, I used to go to a lot of open mics and go to like shows at Churchill's and things like that, which is kind of legendary venue that did a lot of punk shows, local shows, um, national tour, and just a whole, whatever you could think of that, you know, is down there. They have jazz nights. So it's very diverse, you know, I feel like, yeah, it's just very diverse and like just from a distance, like on Instagram, seeing stuff of events happening down there, it seems like, yeah, it's just kind of like Tallahassee on a large scale and like spread out and like it's like three Tallahassees and like, you know, so it's just very, yeah, definitely diverse wide, but it's there though. You know, people are, they're doing zine fest and like 305 fest was a thing that they used to do. So a lot of DIY stuff going down, going on down there, but yeah, a little larger. <laughs> I was going to ask how, how much your DIY ethic comes from, like you were saying your punk background, you have a bit of a punk background or how much of that is just like inherent to like hip hop spaces more than I may be aware of. Uh, no, definitely both. But honestly, I guess uh, in the punk rock community, I think that was the first time I heard that idea being like put into words like DIY, you know, understanding that because like, that's definitely prominent in the hip hop community. Like a lot of the artists I listened to kind of started off with that ethic as well. So but yeah, I, I think I'd say it's equal, but like moving to Tallahassee or not even before moving up here, just like discovering bands and like for example i think finding against me kind of put me in that wormhole so through them discovering a whole bunch of other bands and like different scenes like folk punk and like all the different subgenres. but then also when i'm discovering like rappers that i like and digging into their history and you know going through their discography like they're essentially doing the same thing you know so something that was really big in the 90s in New York especially was to make 12 inches like 12 inch singles you know for rap for rappers and if you had a 12 inch single that was like the thing so you always had people just like scrounging up whatever money they have trying to press their vinyl so you know doing shows making their own CDs so it's very yeah it's very prominent in both scenes for sure you know so like for artists that are on tour that'll make like tour only merch and like mixtapes and things like that that's definitely something like rappers do as well and i feel like punk bands do that too with like having like tour only you know merch and music and things like that so um yeah i'd say punk music put it into words but in hip-hop they're just constantly like living it the same way i'd say the punk scene does too so yeah 50 50. um I'm trying to think of there's like three things i was trying to ask within that i'm trying to remember which, which trying to figure out which one i want to go but first um yeah but i guess it, it makes sense because don't you control don't you have your own label isn't citronella room your own label yeah yeah so citronella room is the label i started a couple years ago and it's just me kind of like yeah trying to do all those things um you know, just, I don't know, like being in high school, I spent a lot of time listening to music, reading stuff on the internet and just learning about, you know, labels and, you know, the same with hip hop and punk rock, like rappers starting their own labels and doing all these just cool things that I thought were cool. So it's like, oh, I want to do that. I feel like it would be a good way for me to put out my own music, you know, or and not have to worry about like getting signed or like submitting the labels and like. So it's like, fuck it, I could just do my own thing, you know, I, especially in this day and age with like Spotify and just streaming and, 
you know, basically anyone with an internet connection can like start, you know, start a label essentially, you know? So it's like, yeah, let me just try to just have ideas and put them to life and create merch and release music and yeah, have like a little production name that I could kind of do all my creative stuff under basically. But yeah, just all DIY, just, yeah, just trial and error and um, yeah. Yeah, if that answers that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you, you put out other artist stuff too in Tallahassee. And so I, as you're saying, like when it's in this day and age, everybody can kind of put their stuff out on the internet. Um, what's, do you think the significance of having like that collective nature of having like multiple people on a label that's on a, doing the DIY thing, except everybody doing it independently? Yeah, I mean, because I think when you get like people who are like minded, especially like the music that I'm putting out by my friends is like, these are people I've been working with for years, and they're good friends of mine. And like, we all kind of have a very like, common way of thinking as far as just like the music we like, how to approach it, and we're just very passionate about what we do. So it just makes sense to kind of like, have people that like you trust and like can work with and help each other out, you know, because it's like, it's just a way to like have people to collaborate with, but then it's also just like, yeah, us helping each other out, giving each other material to work with, um, ideas to bounce off of. So it's kind of like having, it's like being in a band without being in a band, you know, cause you guys, I mean, we could just like, yeah, just collaborate and um, play shows together or, you know, play, you know, just, yeah, get together and be musically collaborative and, it's all kind of like a hobby for us anyway. So it's something we just enjoy doing. So it makes sense to kind of like get together and make our own little community and just like meet other people, invite other people to perform with us and just like make people realize that, you know, Tallahassee is still kind of like kicking as a city. So yeah, come through and play shows with us and we'll go out and visit and play shows too. So it's like a way of like making our own little community of like like-minded, you know, people. So do you promote a lot of shows? I want to, I have in the past and that kind of slowed down obviously, but I'm trying to get into that more. I do primarily do like hip hop shows, but a couple months ago I did my, like I promoted my first like mixed bill show. So I had some bands, one band in particular from central Florida, Floating Boy, they came up and played, found some other locals to perform with and it was a really good experience. And so I'm hoping to kind of do that more there are other artists and bands that I like that I want to bring to Tally, or there are local artists that I've always wanted to like perform with. So yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get back into that a little bit. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, but shows at the bark and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to be the venue where everything kind of coalesces around in Tallahassee nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> so at least in Tallahassee, is there much of a history of like hip hop shows doing house shows? Um, I guess a little bit, I would say so. I've definitely been to house shows where they're, you know, hip hop artists performing, but I guess mostly, yeah, I feel like those would probably happen at like venues more, but I don't know. I think, I think it happened a lot more like 10 years ago or like 15 years ago or something like that, where, um, yeah, you would go to a show and there would be a local artist or yeah, like I said, from Gainesville, there would be some people coming through this band in particular, Scum of the Earth. I've seen them perform like DIY house shows. I've seen them play like proper hip hop shows at a venue. So um, there's definitely other artists that kind of like, you know, run with that whole DIY thing as well, that punk aesthetic where it's just like, yeah, just playing music and performing with whoever. And I, and I know in other cities too, like for example, in Pensacola, there's an event called, um, I don't know, I think it has like um, like hip hop versus, but it's basically just like a mixed bill show where they'll have like half the bill is, you know, hip hop, the other half are punk bands and they'll kind of like, you know, do sets back and forth. So yeah, I'd say that, yeah, there's definitely a space for that. And Tally has somewhat of a history, but, um, at least in my experience, for sure. I've seen it, I've been there, it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, unfortunately I've only seen you once and, and that was at a house show. It was like April last year. So it was a little over a year ago now. It was that one that like, it was at the litter box quote them, I think was the name, what they called it. it was like Cat Family Records that put on a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. 
Yeah, because I feel like I played there twice last year, maybe. Was it like, was I also DJing for someone else, like in the background at one point? I don't remember. I remember like the, it was like two bands like played first. It was like Professional Businessman and Chatterer. I remember that show. That was a lot, a lot of fun. They, yeah, they put on good events. Yeah, it's been a while since they've done anything, but that spot was like really cool. I loved the whole inside of it, you know? That was definitely the most put together house show I've ever been to. Like they had grills out back, and I think they had a bouncy house or something. It was, yeah, it was lovely, but unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> how since you've been in the scene for a while, how have you noticed it change over the years in Tallahassee? Because I'm sure as a college town, I've only been really like going to shows in Tallahassee for a couple of years, but I imagine it changes a lot pretty frequently. Yeah, it does. Um, I'd say there are a lot less. Well, I don't know. It's not even true because it's hard for me to say nowadays just because um, I guess I don't really go out as much to some of the house shows that happen because I feel like they're kind of, I don't know. Yeah, so it is a college town. It is a party town. So there's always like parties and bands playing at house shows. But I feel like it's not necessary. I don't want to sound like pretentious or anything, but it's like not necessarily like my scene. It's not like it's like a bunch of college students playing for other college students, which is fine. And I think that's great. And I I'm, I like to see that that's still happening because like I'll see an address for one of these things. And it's like, oh, yeah, I used to go to shows on that street back in the day. So it is cool to see that those things are still happening. But yeah, there's always bands that kind of come and go, you know, students that play together and then they move away. But at the same time, though, I feel like there's also a group of musicians who are local who have been playing forever together and they're still playing. So I have friends that are in bands that I've been playing shows with since like, you know, a decade plus, you know, so there's definitely some of it is still a lot the same, you know, because a lot of these people are just so passionate. So they're just going to always be playing in bands and always be playing music. But then um, you still see, yeah, like there's still the college kids having their parties. Um, And then now there's like some venues that are opening up and some that are closing, but yeah, I, I think it's still pretty like healthy and vibrant here, whether it be like, even if it's maybe something that's not your thing, you can't deny that there's still a scene and people are, there's an audience for it and people are still, you know, it's still thriving. So I think, um, yeah, I think the music scene is great up here for sure. Do you have a favorite place to play in Tallahassee? Like currently or just like ever in the world, like in my lifetime? Because <laughs> oh, yes, uh, there's so many places. Yeah, okay, so like currently I would say like if I were to play a show like today, I don't know, it's hard to say like 926 is interesting and the bark is interesting, but they have like things that if like they could come together and be like one place, that would be really cool. The Wilbury was a really cool spot, but they stopped doing shows, you know, when COVID started. So that would have been my answer if they were still open, but. Yeah, it seems like the bark is basically taking what the Wilbury used to be. It's. Right. So I used to go to shows at the Wilbury, like, back back in the day. But... True. And I noticed that, like, oh, CDU, I would say, like, the old CDU on FSC's campus was, was super cool. I haven't been to the new one. But, yeah, once the Wilbury closed, I noticed that, like, shows that would have happened there, yeah, the, the Bark definitely took a lot of that, which is cool, too, because I've seen some really, really good shows at the Bark. But, yeah, I would say the Wilbury, the Bark is, yeah, I'm always there. But, um... There used to be, so right where GVO is on that corner, that used to be a place called the far side, that that building used to be a CD warehouse. And then it turned into like a a collective space, you know, and it was called the far side. And I used to really like playing shows there, but then also right behind it, like the, the main GVO building that used to be called the beta bar slash engine room. And that would, I've never actually played at the, when it was called the beta bar but i've seen some like legendary shows there and that would have been my favorite venue or my pick to be like oh i made it i know i made it if i played a show there you know but um but yeah just like that general area yeah the the beta bar would be my answer <laughs> <laughs> dang i feel like i missed out before my time <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I feel that way too, because I feel like even before my time, it was, I feel like I always hear stories about like stuff that happened before I moved up here. And I'm like, damn, I was, I was in middle school when that happened. I, I would have <laughs> no idea about that, you know? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I guess this is people always look back to things they miss, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's all about what we create now, which you definitely seem to be part of doing that entirely. So whether with your label or whatever else, <laughs> but yeah, just trying to just trying to always have a, a good show to go to. <laughs> so. Do you know why CDU doesn't do as I feel like they don't do as many shows as they used to? Because I remember like back before they started, or really before COVID, but definitely before they remodeled. Because I went to the old one they had and saw some shows there. And then, and then they were like doing it like right before, like a year or two before COVID, they started like doing like remodeling or something. And then it seems, seems like that's finished, but I still feel like they don't do as many shows as like before they did before. Yeah, they don't seem like I noticed they do a lot more like local like showcases, but even then th those seem like few and far between. But yeah, I I think they've done maybe like two or three that I I might be able to like think off the top of my head that were like kind of big shows. But yeah, like C D U used to be like so active like when I was going to school there and even afterwards and like the last call before fall when they used to do that. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but yeah, I've seen some pretty amazing shows here and um, yeah, it's just not like what it used to be, even like for the college concerts, but yeah, I've seen some wild shows, a lot of fun shows, but that that actually is probably my favorite place that I played at. Um, my band, we opened for Matt and Kim one year and it was just like, fucking crazy it was like sold out packed and it was just like damn this is fucking awesome but yeah i saw a girl talk there once i don't know the thermals uh, i don't know just so many that were just wild the fucked up was crazy that was a, a wild show but yeah not to go back to a previous question but i don't know if i had mentioned cdu before <laughs> you said you your band played at cdu so like was it like you used to be in like different projects while you were in town yeah so uh i used to play in a band called sleeping spiders that i played guitar and it was a band that my friend started but and asked me to join and we did that for a couple of years so and it was a lot of fun we toured a couple times we played with we had a couple cool opening slots playing for some bands like ajj screaming females reviver so played some awesome shows but um yeah eventually we all kind of like moved away but but then even before that I played in a ska band and then in high school I was in a band and after Sleeping Spiders I had another band I started with some friends before I moved back to Miami. Yeah, and I think that's kind of why Artists in P started just because I wasn't really playing music with anyone in Miami so it's like oh well, I could do like a solo project but then I met DJ Proof so it's like me and him work and then so on and so forth but that was like my way to find a way to like continue to play music without necessarily like having a band or anything like that. So yeah, I'm just constantly like trying to play music <laughs> one way or another. Are you involved in any other projects other than your own um, artist and team right now? Um, not, not really. I'm kind of uh, collaborating with Buster Wolf, who's another artist on the label. He's a rapper and a producer. And we've done a lot of the songs together in the past, but we've kind of just been like working on a bunch of other stuff. So we've got like some new material that we're working on and hoping to be premiering or releasing like later this year and like we'll probably start doing shows again so that's like the uh i would say the closest thing to like band or like collaboration i'm working on right now but mostly just yeah writing a bunch and working on like the next artist mp thing but yeah him and i are cooking something up currently so Ooh, what can you tell me about that it's going to be both of us rapping uh, over some of his beats, over some of DJ Proof's beats, and Late Show Host is a producer on the label as well, so beats from them. Yeah, just us, like, rapping our asses off, I think. And it's interesting because it's like we're kind of, since we're collaborating, it's not like, not necessarily trying to outdo each other, because I feel like we're both good in our own rights. We have our own different styles, but, like, it just, like, I feel like we complement each other, and it's just, like, yeah, it still kind of pushes you to try to be like, all right, I got to like be good. I can't like half-ass this, you know? So, but yeah, it's going to be pretty dope. And I think it's going to translate very well in a live setting. So just a lot of more shows coming up and I think they're going to be great. So how's the music that you, you guys are kind of cooking up? You want to compare it to what y'all put out before? 
I'd say it's a little like, I think we're both being a little more experimental as far as like trying to like do new things. And since there's two of us, we can like try different ideas that we necessarily wouldn't think to do on our own or by ourselves, you know? So definitely just a lot more like back and forth, you know, but also just messing around with like song structures a little bit and just like, I don't know, finding beats that are a little, not like darker, but just a little more interesting sounding and not not necessarily like traditional boom bap sounding, but like a little lo-fi, a little experimental, a little more abstract, not too much, nothing crazy, but just definitely like not your traditional stuff, or at least in my case, like of what I've been putting up before. Uh, Because Buster Wolf has always had like some pretty eclectic like sounding production. He does all his own production. But yeah, it's just like his influence and then DJ proofs like his like a different side of his like usual beats. So we're just trying new things for sure. Exciting. So it's been, I guess, almost like about what nine months or so since your last album came out. Was it October? October, yeah. Yeah, so it's been out for a minute now. What's been the response to that album overall? Um, I think it's been like pretty positive. I think people enjoy like the production. I don't know, it's interesting. I feel like some of the songs, they all kind of like, like it, w- when I think of the album, it's all sectioned and kind of like different sounding songs and like certain sounds. And I feel like there's like a little bit of something for everybody, you know, so like, it's just interesting to hear like which songs people like respond strongly to, you know? So like, if there's like a song in particular that like, of course I like all of them, but there's certain ones where I'm like, Oh, this is like the one, you know, but someone is like, Oh no, I really like this one. And like, Oh, this one was so cool. And it's like, I wouldn't necessarily like think of those as like the best ones on there. So it's just like really interesting. Like I'm surprised by some of the the response I'm getting basically, you know? So, but yeah, it's been pretty positive. People really dig like the t-shirts uh, that I made, you know, the merch, the tapes, the presentation of it, you know, people responded to that. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. My first like full length solo album officially. So it's been a great experience. Awesome. And also Laura Jangris posting a copy of my tape on her Instagram story was a big plus as well. So that was a cool reaction. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, something I did want to ask you, because um, we were both at the Against Me show, or a Lord and Get Grace show, uh, what, like a month ago now, and she called you out, like, by name when she was on stage, <laughs> so do y'all know each other? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I guess we're kind of friends, um, but yeah, I've been going to Against Me shows for, like, since I was, you know, young. She's been going to so many shows and, like, running into her and meeting her and talking to her after shows uh, that we kind of just kind of develop somewhat like you know a friendship and like we're friends on twitter so we'll talk through twitter sometimes and i literally go to every single against me show in the area i can so i'm always there (laughs) but um but yeah no that was i wasn't expecting that i thought that was pretty (laughs) pretty funny but yeah no she's super cool yeah i've been a big fan for a while so awesome yeah yeah i was like i was really glad to be able to make it to that show because i had i had to take it to see her in athens because i was at uga at the time but it was like april 2020 so it got canceled obviously so i was like okay now i can yeah that was that was the first time i'd seen her live so that was cool yeah and i don't know i'm I'm glad she called you out because like i don't know like i randomly like recognized you once i saw you later on i was like oh wait (laughs) let me run ask you again if you want to do this since like we had talked about it last summer (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah no that was yeah that was wild i was just like oh shit wait is she talking to me like oh wow but <laughs> no nah, it was super cool and that show was awesome that was like one of the best shows i've been to in a while so mm-hmm. had a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> so going back to your um golden summer album the blurb on it at, at, on your band camp page just like describing it at the bottom it says it's like an ode to lessons learned in pre- the previous summers is that just like a cool thing to say or is there like cool stories behind that, <laughs> that you want to tell <laughs> <laughs> no i thought it was cool i think like a lot of it was kind of like the idea of like golden summer like nostalgic and like you know something that you think back upon like fondly sometimes but 
I guess nothing in particular. It just made me think of like, just like being a kid and like running around during the summer and just like getting into shit, you know, like, especially like living in Tallahassee where like the city kind of dies down during the summer. I just think of, you know, my friends and I just getting on our bikes and riding around town and jumping from apartment complex swimming pool to apartment complex and just like having the time of your life and just like, you know, partying and just, yeah, I don't know, just thinking about those things and thinking about misses, like missed opportunities maybe, or just like maybe some learning from mistakes and just things like that and just um, trying to do better and just like, yeah, just that whole nostalgic throwback feel that's very popular now. But <laughs> but honestly, I think what, what like inspired the title is the song Golden that Buster Wolf produced. And like the way that beat sounded had like a retro feel to it. And I felt like I wanted to center the album around that song kind of, or at least the idea of that song and the feel of that song. So yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, all that. It did sound cool though. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely listened to the song Golden a lot last summer. I think you released it as a single like a while before the album. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did that like, yeah, June, I think, like at the beginning of the summer and then like dropped another single or video or whatever. And then, yeah, so I was a little bit behind schedule, but yeah, <laughs> gave it some time to breathe a little bit before the album came out. Mm-hmm. What do you think the role of like the single is nowadays in terms of with like digital streaming and then like with albums coming out later? Like, I don't know. How, how, do you think it's different than what it used to be, especially for like under more underground artists? I think so. I think like the most cynical answer is it's just a way to boost your album sales numbers, you know, because like one thing I notice is that a band will put out a single, right? And then they'll put out the second single, but the first song is attached to that second single. And then they do a third single and then those previous two singles. So they're just basically like collecting those stream counts so that when the album comes out, all of that goes towards the album. So like, you know, so that's like, I think the reason why a lot of people do that and not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just like the way things are now, you know? So it's like to kind of like, boost your album sales numbers all those i'm pretty sure all those streams from the single counts towards it so i think it's just a way for people to fluff numbers but i mean i think in a way it's still serving its purpose of kind of like yeah promoting the album and it's like hey here's a new song and like this is what the new album's going to sound like and it's something to kind of like hold people over in between albums but then there's also artists who are just like singles artists and they don't put out albums you know they just put out a bunch of singles which is cool too and i think because like it's so easy to put something up and it doesn't take very long. I think it's just adds to the very like instant instantaneous of like our social media generation now, you know, but I think part of, I think it still does like serve its purpose. Cause like if someone puts out a single, sometimes depending on who it is, I'll check it out. But then sometimes I'll just wait for the albums to come out and just like listen to it then too. So I think it just depends on the artist for sure. Yeah. I I can relate to that too. I'm, I'm still definitely an album person. I don't know if that makes me weird for someone my age or not, but it just seems cool to just have that more extended experience of like, especially when it's really not just like a collection of singles, but kind of like really tailored to be a full like artistic piece on its own and how everything connects. But I don't know. No, definitely. Yeah. Cause like, like if, if I'm going to skip a single, it's probably because it's like, I just want to hear this in the right context. I don't want to like, you know, I just want to hear the whole, album and just hear it all together you know Mm -hmm. especially if it's like an album i'm like super anticipating i'll try to avoid listening to the singles just to like listen to the album with like a blank slate pretty much you know yeah i do the same thing for sure changing topics a little bit you definitely played a lot of shows in tallahassee how much have you played outside of tally not as often as i'd like i've done a couple like uh out of town like i used to play in orlando so I guess as artists in PA, I've played outside of Tallahassee just a handful of times, you know, like Miami, Orlando, Pensacola, Gainesville, I think are the only cities I've performed outside of Tallahassee as artists in PA. In Sleeping Spiders, we played a lot of shows in Gain, like we did Tampa, Gainesville a lot, and then we did two East Coast tours, you know, that brought us up to New York, you know, DC, Philly, Boston, Rhode Island. So I've got to play outside 
of Florida, which is a great experience in like a touring setting. I'm hoping to get back into that as I grow the artist and P, you know, uh, catalog. And so, yeah, definitely something I want to continue to do. But I think with like COVID, obviously, it kind of just set <laughs> the whole world back a little bit. So I'm still kind of like not like trying to rush into it, but just trying to get like all the right pieces in order before I feel like I want to like go on tour again or something like that. But I'm definitely trying to play like little one offs outside of Tally and just like kind of go back to Orlando, go back to Gainesville. Those have always been great experiences, but also travel to other cities, you know, new cities that haven't performed at before just to kind of like, yeah, meet new people and kind of like spread the word out a little bit. I think Tampa is like high on the list just because I haven't rapped there before. Yeah, I definitely want to like do some spots in Georgia, go back. I've played in Jacksonville before. Definitely want to go back to Jacksonville. So yeah, it's in the, it's in the plans, but I'm kind of like taking my time with it a little bit. So, so have you played outside of Florida as artisan P? No, not yet. Gotcha. Not yet. That's the goal one day. I would love to like, you know, there's a couple of people in like, you know, Georgia, like Savannah or Athens. I'd like to like visit and check out um, Savannah. Wait, did I just say that? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I know most of those places kind of have like pop. Their they're, um, rap scenes are really burgeoning right now. I know Athens is and I've heard Savannah's is as well. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, I, I lived in Athens for a couple of years. I just graduated from UGA. So, like, what, what are some of the artists up there that you would love to play with? So, I'm not sure if she's from Athens. Uh, but honestly, when I think of Athens, like, it just makes me think of, like, I don't know if I'm correct in saying this, but I want to say, wasn't, like, the Elephant Six or Collective or something like that from there? Like, that whole so, like, neutral milk uh, I think there was like kind of like a, a like half of them were kind of like in Texas at first, and half of them were in Athens. But then like the centering of it kind of moved to Athens. Definitely of Montreal okay. has always been, been like because they're an Athens band, and Elf Power, which is one of the, like the lesser ones of those. And then right. there's I can there's always one. Is it Olivia Tremor Control? I think that one it depended on the members of that group. Although I think some of those members later on formed Nana Grizzle. Just still around okay. that it's kind of considered an Athens band. They actually played Go Bar's last show a few years ago. They all used to always play like a New Year's Eve show at Go Bar, I want to say. But yeah, nice. the Elephant Six is pretty cool and still like a prominent thing in Athens. Personally, I feel like it doesn't get as much love as it should because like that whole like 80s scene of like REM and uh, oh, yeah. you know, Pylon just like, supersede everything, I guess, because you know, the old people are still the ones like <laughs> controlling the narrative. Right. I don't know, but yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like Athens comes up just because it seems like one of those cities that like I feel like a lot of tours go through, and like people like it seems like obviously, like you know, College Town has the scene. So, like, when I think of like starting close to home i think like savannah comes to mind athens you know birmingham kind of like these like regional areas and so i kind of want to start like locally and then grow out a little bit so like that would definitely be a place i'd like to play at you know atlanta obviously new orleans is like another bucket list uh location but yeah i feel like um there's definitely some artists in Savannah as well that like I see doing their thing, like Kuna Bear is a rapper who I think just released a music video this morning or something. Elaine Valor, I believe her name is. I could be completely wrong. I think that's her actual name, but Lady Valor is what she rapped under. I think there was another rapper, I want to say Lingua Franca. I want to say she's from like that area, right? Okay, no, that's from Athens. Um, they That she's from, okay, yeah, okay. They're from Athens. They actually were a com city commissioner in Athens until really recently, which is like just really badass because like they literally swore themselves on uh, into their office on the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, they they quit recently. They're doing more reunion organizing now than anything. But they they done a lot with this, the Savannah rapper Dope Knife. Yes, it was really cool. They actually on and off do a podcast called Waiting on Reparations. That's pretty cool too. Okay, cool. Yeah, Dope Knife. That's definitely another artist who, yeah, I've wanted to, and I feel like, you know, I could potentially try to like reach out and like see if I could do something, but that's like another name. Yeah, for sure. Dope Knife. But yeah, there's definitely like a lot of talent, you know, talent out there, you know, and um, I feel like, yeah, I'd be interested in playing a show with them and um, 
kind of like cultivating that that southern rap community the su- southern diy indie rap you know um so yeah <laughs> yeah I, I absolutely love link franca's music um and i like dope. i listen to dope not a decent amount too no i was gonna say yeah there uh there was one video that they had that was just like i don't know like the way they rap was just so like so intricate and so like technical and so like catchy and good and it's just like holy shit was it the work video ah it's been so long since i've seen it but they're like talking about like there's one line something about one way more than one way to crack an egg or something like that and just like yeah just going off like but again, that just reminds me of like also when I first started rapping as artist MP, like 2016, 2017, discovering all these artists. And so it's always been like in my mind to be like, oh, I would love to go there and perform, you know? So, but yeah, I got to go back and check that stuff out again. <laughs> other, a couple of other places potentially if you just want to play Georgia, you know, God has a DIY house. Right. Yeah. They do usually about one show a month, and that's not too. That's what, a little over an hour from Tally, I guess, depending on what side of town you're on. Maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's yeah terribly far. Yeah, and then uh, I wouldn't necessarily say do that as like routinely. I don't really know what this seems like generally, but I know like Macon has a. They have like a like a like a lot of. They actually have a lot of hip hop artists, and I remember like, they do like a music festival end of every summer called Brag Jam in Macon, which traditionally has been more of like a kind of like folksy americana type centered but like last year like a quarter of the artists were just like local hip-hop artists and it's, it's like a national thing so like they'll, they'll take it was mostly people from the southeast playing but they had a lot of local people but i know they used to like let people just kind of like submit their own music and be like hey can i perform uh they saw it to be like call to artists which they haven't done like the last couple of years but if you want to like like look them up or me send you the stuff you may still be able to get on the bill there oh no for sure they haven't announced our lineup yet. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really cool. That out for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I live in, I live in like Southwest Georgia now, even though like I went to Athens. So like I'm from Georgia is how I know all this, but like I'm like oh, right across gotcha, the Florida yeah. border. So that's why I would always be coming okay. down to Tallahassee. Cause it's really the closest place to my, my hometown. Cause I'm a hole in the dirt to like go to shows. True. Okay. Okay. So like that's how I knew the Wilbury because like before I went to UGA I would go to shows in Tallahassee then I would live in Athens for a bit but now I'm back and South Georgia going so random context you probably that you didn't ask for but <laughs> <laughs> no you didn't um, <laughs> yeah one random question I have is I know like your first EP was called Space Cadet but it seems like that's kind of like a running motif or at least like the phrase and some of your other stuff I know like. And there's like a few other songs that's really, I know there's one in different forms that comes to mind. Is that just like a callback to your first album's name or is there like a story behind where that comes from? Yeah, no, definitely a callback. Yeah, that was definitely intentional. Yeah, just a kind of a way to like remind us, like remind people and myself that I'm still that same guy or not more or less, but just to remind myself of like my beginning. And it's like, yeah, definitely a yeah, callback. Maybe like a, a minor little character I made for myself. Yeah, maybe there might be some more appearances later on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean a character that you made? Yeah, just like um, like in that song, it's like whoever like, like so basically that song is kind of just like being a person, like being an artist who's like not necessarily struggling to like um, make it to the top, but just to find like their own way, their own lane and like, yeah, just doing things their own way, all like weird and different from everybody else. So it's just like, yeah, I'm still that same, you know, that hungry artist, eager, trying to, like, work my way to, like, whatever I'm working, you know, my goal that I'm working towards, so. Yeah, and I've actually thought about, like, doing more, like, Space Cadet type stuff, but I definitely want it to be, like, a natural thing. I don't want to, like, force it too much, but. I don't want to just, like, purposely make a whole concept album? <laughs> right, no, not yet, not, not yet, at least. <laughs> <laughs> That's the final album. The final form yeah yeah there you go <laughs> you know what's what's in the future for you what all do you have in the works i know you already said you had the two, thing in you and buster wolf are doing anything else for you or your label yeah just more music from late show host from myself um from buster wolf i'm also hoping to get into promoting shows more often something that we kind of briefly talked about earlier but 
I DJ for fun. So I'm trying to like DJ more and like do more events like that. But then also just like bringing more artists to Tallahassee, more regional artists, have more local artists that, you know, maybe discover that I can discover to kind of like put on and have shows with as well, you know? So just more music and more, yeah, more music. (laughs) That's going to be a constant, hopefully more videos and more visuals and merch and vinyl and all that stuff. So a bunch of cool stuff in in my head that I'm hoping to put out in physical form. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Do uh, I guess? Well, well, last thing I always like to end with, unless there's something else you specifically want to talk about that I just didn't think of. I guess the way I always like to end it is like, who's an artist in your local scene you want to give a shout out to? Which I guess, other than on your label, since I feel like you've already kind of name dropped all of them. <laughs> Yeah, there's a band called Medusa Phase that I'm a fan of. Uh, I want to shout out to them. Shout out to Protocol, all the hardcore bands that are playing shows out here. You know, uh, Wish, that's one of the bands. Shout out to all the kids playing these college shows. Chef Will, he's a rapper that performs with a live band in this area. Puts on a great show, super talented. Yeah, shout out to all of them for sure. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I guess just tell people where to find your music, your social media, oh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Instagram is artist and P Twitter is the artist and P uh, my music's on Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. YouTube. Um, we have merch on Bandcamp, citronella room.bandcamp.com citronella room.com. And yeah, you'll find me. Is spider Bucket's music anywhere? Say that again. Was your, um, was your old band's music anywhere? Oh, uh, uh, Sleeping Spiders. Um, oh, Sleeping Spider. I I spider Bucket, I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, no, you're good, you're good. Uh, no, the, I think the band camp is still up, but that's the only thing that we would be on. So I think it might just be sleepingspiders.bandcamp.com. I haven't been on that page in a very long time, so <laughs> those are very old recordings, but I think that's the only place it exists. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on. Hope you have an incredible evening, all that. And hopefully I'll be able to see you at a show soon. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Because we felt that truly mattered They heard along the grapevine They already heard about us Across various state lines The name carries weight So you better learn to say mine Couldn't bear the workload So they fell off by the wayside If you could stay calm Everything will be fine I'm not worried about the tingle in my spine It's just a matter of time Stars all will align It's the space cadet signing out I'll see you on the other side This episode was recorded on May 15th, 2023.